Welcome back to some new malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Send It Back. I was recently laid off from my remote job. It was a last minute video chat with HR. And then my entire access was cut off as soon as the call ended. No time to say goodbye to anyone. No time to retrieve any personal files from my laptop and a bad severance. But then the kicker was telling me that I needed to ship their laptop back as soon as possible. I've had other companies send prepaid laptop boxes to return equipment or just say to keep it. This company expected me to waste my time packaging up the computer and then find a place to ship it back. Seems like a lot to ask of someone you just got rid of like that. They gave me their shipping account code and told me I could just charge it to their account. I eventually got around to going across the town, only to be told the code doesn't work and I have to pay out of pocket. At this point, I'm very annoyed with this process. The company tells me I can pay out of pocket and they'll reimburse me. Okay, I can do that. So I found the most expensive option I could find. I added some tiles into the box to make it extra heavy and had it shipped. I also shipped my mouse and power supply separately in the same expensive fashion with extra rate. Total cost? $840. The cost of the laptop probably was about $500. Maybe next time they won't fire people and then expect them to drive around town to return their stuff. The next story is called Handbook Rules. I work in a medium sized office with a very, let's say, meticulous manager. We have a company handbook that's easily 300 pages and nobody has probably ever read it cover to cover. It has a lot of old and outdated rules, which we all ignore in favor of common sense. Last week, someone made a minor mistake that was against one of the obscure rules. Instead of addressing the specific issue, our boss decided to have a meeting. He proudly announced that from now on, we would follow the handbook rules to the absolute letter, with no exceptions. Q. Malicious Compliance Our handbook says we are entitled to a 10 minute break for every hour worked. Instead of the usual 1 hour lunch and two 15 minute breaks, we all started taking 8 separate 10 minute breaks throughout the day. Productivity plummeted. Apparently there was a rule saying ties were mandatory, but it didn't specify for whom. The women in the office started wearing the most outrageous ties they could find. The rulebook states every document should be printed in triplicate. The printers were constantly jamming and running out of paper. The office looked like a paper factory explosion. There's a clause about CCing supervisors on every email. Our boss's inbox was flooded to the point of crashing. A rule mentioned that any change, however minor, should be communicated to the entire team. Got a new pen? Send an announcement. Moved your chair, announcement. The constant pinging of email notifications became a hilarious office song. By the third day, our manager was at his wit's end. The entire office was barely functioning and he knew he was the cause. On Friday, he called another meeting to announce that maybe we should use our best judgment and not rely solely on the handbook. The handbook is currently under revision. The third story is called School Dress Code When I was in high school, I was part of a punk band that played regular gigs in a few venues around the city. We would regularly open for touring bands that came into town. I guess we were a bit of a novelty act, since we were all like 15 years old and put on a good show. Part of being an interesting punk band is having a wild appearance, and as such, I always had some kind of brightly colored mohawk or spikes on my head. One day, in the middle of the school year, the school sends home an updated dress code notice that now includes no unnatural hair colors or styles and a few other annoying changes that were specifically directed at me and my friends. At the time, my hair was actually bleach blonde, so technically I didn't have to do anything. But when I got home, I remembered that I had a ridiculously plush curly grey granny rig that I had bought as a gag. That's when my devious little mind had a great idea. The next day at school, I showed up in combat boots with a plaid suit and my hilarious granny rig. First period, I had a really nice teacher who complimented my humor. Second period, I had a different teacher 
Oh, I knew must have had something to do with the dress code change. Because we had actually argued about my appearance before. I showed up early to class and had a seat. Class is about to start. The teacher walks in, gets everyone quiet and at attention. Then I notice him notice me. He calls me out. Yes, sir. Take that ridiculous thing off your head right now. I comply and as I take it off, my freshly dyed bright blue mohawk springs up. The look on his face was priceless. The whole class was stifling their laughter. We all knew he was gonna have to choose. He just tightens his mouth, shakes his head and says, whatever. I got to do this with every hard teacher for the rest of my day. Inevitably, it seems I was able to make the rules unenforceable. And after a few weeks, other kids were showing up with unnatural hair as well. No one gave us much resistance after that. The last story is called the last day. Daylight saving time can really goof up your time card. It was of course dead time again. An extra hour. Time clock already changed. We are told we work that hour. And then when it comes around again, we get out an hour early. Okay, I don't trust them. Yet really have no choice. I found a better job. And I do the right thing and put in a two weeks notice. The main manager wasn't there. I put in my notice to Mr. Big. The number two. I'm told he'll tell the main manager, since she's on vacation currently. I trust him to do his job. Two weeks go by, and it's my last day. And it also happens to be the get out an hour early day. Nope, now the main manager is there. She said, I never said that. No, Mr. Big said that if we stay that extra hour, we get it back now, by leaving an hour early. She stares at me, smiles and says, if you leave, I'll fire you. Now, it's my last day. I'm tired, sore and rather ticked over this hour. So I looked at her and said, well, since it's my last day, I think I'll just go. Guess who never told her that I put in my notice. Her reply is, what? You never put your notice into me. I told Mr. Big because you were on vacation. He assured me he would tell you. I was on vacation and he didn't tell me, so it didn't count. By this point, I'm on my way to the time clock. She was screaming after me, but I just got my coat punched out and headed for the door. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.